Hey everyone, Dylan Carlo here from All You Can Board, and today we are talking filler games. So you're probably wondering, what is a filler game? Because I know I had that same question. And because I'm not even 100% sure, I'm going to let Carlo explain. So explain, <laughs> explain filler games for us. Well, okay, I think there's a bit of a... It's open to interpretation. Way. Usually it's something that it, a game that is used to fill time. So we don't mean that in like a, like a derogatory sense or whatever. It doesn't mean it's a lesser game. They're just usually games that, have, that play in about 30 to 45 minutes at most. Usually have a very quick rule set. It's usually either you're waiting for people to show up for game night or something. You think, oh, let's just play something until they arrive. Or maybe it's the end of the game night to close out the night when someone's like, I got to be home soon, but I got 20 minutes or whatever. So Yeah, or even in between like big games, if you've yes. like, you know, played a, a big game, you're like, before you jump into another one, you want almost like a bit of a palate cleanse. You can kind of think yeah. of filling that time as a filler game. It's basically a game that, you know, is going to be a shorter length. It does maybe have a variable player count. In just some way, it is a little bit more malleable than say like, you know, sitting down to play a, a, a feast for Odin or something like that. Yeah. Like, you know that you're sitting down for that big experience. You don't have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you're doing it. That's different than some of the games that are on our list. Yeah. And one other thing about it is uh, I think they're good games that people can like, uh, you know, just chat while you're playing. Like, it doesn't have to be just about the game. You can be catching up about the weekend and whatever as you're just kind of laying cards down. So, yeah, fairly light games, but they're still, some of these are among our favorite games in some ways, right? So, yeah. agreed. All right. So, I'm going to toss it to Carlo. You're going to yeah. kick things off. Start with number five. So, my number five filler game is Ink and Gold. Uh, this is also sometimes referred to as, I think there's editions that are called uh, Diamant, um, but it's co designed by Alan R. Moon of Ticket to Ride and Bruno Feiduti, and it's published by Eagle Griffin Games. So, this is a basically push your luck game. Uh, it goes, what is it, three to eight players. So, that's one of the best draws about it, too. Um, you're basically. Game plays over a certain number of five rounds, I think, and every round, every player together is like going into a temple and you're flipping cards over to see what presents itself to the players. Are there gems? Are there uh, hazards? Things like fire or like a mummy or a big spider or whatever. And you're basically pushing your luck every round. Everyone decides if they want to push further into the temple and see what else they can get or if they want to leave the temple. Um, I won't get into the rest of the rules, but it's a very fun game. It's one of those games like I can't, you know, we've probably played it including because it's on board game arena over the pandemic we played this a ton online and in person even before. yeah like during the pandemic in the summer when we could play out outdoors yes it was a great outdoor game to sit around. yeah exactly and um it's it's really good there's a lot of trash talking moments i don't know how many times i've ended this game with zero because i just like once you fall behind a certain eye, i start getting greedy pushing why is, that, why is that we were just talking about this last night we were I, playing we were playing biblios the the quill and parchment version yeah. and carlos multiple times finishes zero points in biblios as well and yeah. i feel like in our reading you probably have like what is it with you and like yeah, these games it's, finding a way to be like i'm gonna take as much risk as possible yeah. and somehow ended up with no points that's the thing when you know you're behind by a certain amount it's like i have to take even a bigger risk yeah. but then chances are i'm gonna end up with zero but yeah super fun game uh everyone i've shown it to it's super easy to pick up only takes a few minutes to learn um you know i've seen you there's the reviews online you can see even like little kids like playing this game it's great for adults too just a really simple good game i don't think this one will ever uh, leave my collection um, yeah and it's like you can always count it it's one of those things where again if you're waiting for uh, someone to come over and you have like say part of your group there you have four people you're waiting for the fifth you have three people waiting for the fourth it's one of those yeah. things you can easily bring out play a session and if they show up in the middle of it it's still kind of fun to watch a play out yes. and you might even just be like you want to jump in for another quick round of it because yeah. it doesn't take very long like it's one that people can kind of jump in jump out and you can be going on while you're doing other things as well yeah. so you get a feel for people's personalities too right you get people's tendencies yeah. like oh we know well carlo's gonna definitely push or someone else yeah. oh they're gonna play it safe you know they're going out the of the temple and the game, right? yeah the meta yeah. kind of thing so yeah. yeah a great great filler game that is ink and gold all right my number five is a game called King Domino. This is a pretty popular game, so I'm sure most of you have heard of it. If you haven't, King Domino is a domino tile lane game. It has you know the the two the two by one tiles with a different um, you know picture terrain on each one. Um, basically, what you're doing is you're building your little kingdom. Um, it's about five by five grid, unless you're playing the um, the bigger two player version where I think it's a seven by seven. But you basically have different terrain types. You have water, you have what do we, we always call it incorrectly we call it deserts, but it's actually grain or something like Wheat that. Or something Wheat, or yeah, we always call it yeah, deserts because yeah. it looks like deserts. Um, forests, uh, swamplands, um, caves, and basically you're trying to match as many of those tiles as you can, um, but also keeping in mind the amount of crowns that are on these tiles because the points are gonna be scored by taking the crowns and multiplying it by the number of tiles in your little collective that you have, or collective group you have there. Very simple to, to learn. 
um, very simple to play or and very quick to play. I think it can play in as quick as 15 minutes, it says, and I've had games that are as quick as 15 minutes, especially with people that are familiar with the rules. Um, it's just a very, very solid game. And, and because of the quick playing time, this is on uh, Board Game Arena as well. And there's been times where we've been meeting with people to play a bigger experience on Board Game Arena. Um, and we're waiting for someone to pop in or they say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm putting the kid to bed. I don't know when I'm going to be on. And we've quickly thrown down a game of King Domino. It, it, it fills that filler gap, fills the filler gap um, perfectly in that sense. Um, and again, because it's it, it's it's two to four, I mean, it's not going to accommodate as many people if, like as Ink and Gold would where you can kind of like always pull it out. But because of how easy it is, because of how simple it is to learn, I would even hazard to say that, you know, if you're waiting for someone to, to come and they hadn't played King Domino yet while you're waiting for someone, you'd even have, even have time to teach it and play it and not yeah, have to worry yeah, about it. You know, quick. some of the games you have to factor that in. Like this is a filler game, but maybe only if you already know how to play because the teach takes some time. Yeah. King Domino, I don't think that's going to be a factor. We've played a whole bunch of King Domino. The weird thing for me is that I played a lot of King Domino and then I sort of, I wouldn't say fell out of it, but it was just one that I had played so much of and it was such a go-to in those filler moments that I just was like, oh, I'm never going to suggest it now. And I almost considered for a while, is this going to stay in my collection? Right. And then it was when we started playing it on Board Game Arena that I got hooked again. Yeah. And I think I learned that as I played with different people, I learned some of the meta with the game and I learned different strategies and I yes. got I got right back into it. Playing the 7x7 seven seven grid version for two players is, is uh, might even be my favorite way to play. Yeah, like, it's awesome. It's a, it's a really simple game, very, very fun, and it's, it fits that perfect um, you know filler mold that we're talking about. Definitely. Yeah. That's yeah. King Domino, number five. Great pick. All right. On to my number four, which uh, I briefly just considered having this a little higher on my list, but it is at number four. That is Point Salad. So this is designed by uh, the crew from Flat Out Games, who uh, have some ties to Winnipeg, so we are obviously maybe a little bit biased here, <laughs> and this is published by AEG. So this plays two to six players, plays in about 15 to 30 minutes, um, <clears throat> and the long and short of it is you have the cards are just like veggies, like tomato, pepper, carrot, onion, whatever. And then on the other side of the cards, there's scoring conditions. So you have like a kind of menu of cards. And on your turn, you're either taking two of the face-up veggies or one of the face-down uh, like point condition cards. And then at the end of the game, you're just scoring points. You look at all your point condition cards. You'll have one that says like two points for every carrot or another one that's like three points for every set of, you know, tomato and cabbage that you have together, or you get negative points for every onion or whatever. There's all these conditions. There's ways throughout the game where you can flip the scoring card over onto the veggie side, so you don't even have to deal with that scoring condition, because sometimes you get stuck with veggies that you don't want, that don't meet in certain ones. Super quick game, like literally sometimes the turns are like Ticket to Ride style, where it just like mm -hmm. takes two seconds. Someone just takes two cards, next person goes, takes two cards, whatever. So it's really good. It goes around, again, it's another one that you can just like talk while you're playing, because there isn't a lot of like you don't have to sit there pondering a whole bunch of stuff on your turn. It moves really quickly. Mm -hmm. The only reason I think it's not higher on my list is because depending on player count, like you always have to go in and take out certain veggies. So it's like if you're playing with this many players, take out this many of each veggie card. And if you're playing with this many, so then you got to sort through the deck, take the cards out, you know, and then if like, let's say someone else shows up, you want to add someone in, you got to add the cards back in kind of thing. So there's a bit of that. Um, exactly. But otherwise it's like, I don't know, I think it's a great, Great filler game, and again, mm -hmm. the, the the variable player count going up to six is. Uh... This actually functioned for us like at I think where I realized it was a really good filler game is during the pandemic we were playing something online um, either on TTS or on was, Board yeah, Game Arena, but yeah. yeah, and we sort of were like, oh, I was like, hey, I know how to play Point Salad, I can, I can show you guys Point Salad, and it filled this like really quick little gap. I can't remember if we played it twice in a row. If we just played. It I think once. we did play it twice. Yeah, but it was just like yeah, it's so quick that again we were able to play it twice. It filled that little uh, gap of time before like everyone's like you know. Uh, I could play another game, but it can't be a long one. Fill the time before yeah, we get yeah. off for the for the night or whatever. But it's just like again, like Carlos said, your turns are very quick and they're very simple. And I and I also have such an affinity for games that um, I'm noticing that have cards or uh, items where you can use them in multiple ways. Yeah, and the, the cards, idea yeah. where it's it's very simple. You can use this as a as a vegetable or you can use it as a point card. But it just like that m mechanic makes you think. In a, in a way that I always just find really satisfying in board games. Same thing with even like, you know, uh, Aeon's End or Marvel Champions with, you know, you can use a card for its ability or you can use it as a resource. That, that multi-use yeah. multi multi-use in, in cards or in games, I would just really get drawn to it. Definitely. And this is a, a simplistic way to introduce Very that to simple. people. And it just, it's so quick. Am I gonna grab veggies? Am I gonna grab point cards? At the end, who had the most points? Like yeah. it's very simple. And one quick thing I wanna add is, uh, going back to what you're saying about King Domino, how you can when you play with two players, you can play like the extended seven by seven. Mm -hmm. They have a suggestion here too. If you're playing with two or three players, like if you're playing with two players, you can divide the deck into three and you play three rounds and then add up your scores. Or with three players, yeah. you divide it in two and play two rounds like that. So yeah, lots of options, tons of replay value for such a small like 
fairly inexpensive game. So yeah, that's my number four, Point Salad. Nice. All right. My number four is, that's pretty clever. I don't know how many times I've said on our videos that's so clever, but I uh, I noticed that the other day. It was double so clever. Is the yeah, so right? I, yeah. I definitely have been calling this game incorrectly a few times, but that's pretty clever is on my list uh, because I've actually used this, um, especially with two players, very often as a filler game, whether that be because I've even like been wanting to fill time before watching a movie and we want something else to do or waiting for a show to come on or in between games or, you know, just like we feel like a game, but we want something that doesn't, you know, take a lot of brain power or doesn't take a lot of, you know, a setting up, whatever we can kick back on the couch just before we go to bed, whatever the case may be. There's been a bunch of times where I've played this game as a sort of filler game, not even just on like a board game specific night. It, I think roll and rights in general are, are just a really good genre for that because they can be played quick, generally, not maybe not all roll and rights, but many of them can be. Um, rules are usually pretty simple. The rules in this game, it's funny because you're not really teaching people the time you're spending isn't on necessarily how to play, it's how you score. But how yes, you play is yeah. you roll your dice and you pick dice. Like that's yeah. that's how you play. Um, you're really teaching people why they're picking the dice that they're picking. So you're going over each of the color categories and saying, right. this is how you score in purple, this is how you score in orange. And really it takes a play before the strategy kicks in. Mm -hmm. So as a filler game, sometimes you're playing and it's not even necessarily, I find with, with this game, it's not necessarily about in those first few games like, I, am I gonna get, I, I need to beat this person. You're just sort of learning, you're just having fun. And it's a Yahtzee feeling where like, you know a lot of it is luck. Like mm -hmm. there, there's a whole element here that it's like, there's more strategy than Yahtzee for sure, but there is this element of it is like, yeah, I just the dice didn't roll in my favor this time. Like I, how many times we've played on the app and I should mention the app version has functioned as a filler game for me. That's what I was gonna say. Like, playing it solo, that's like yeah. waiting at a bus stop or on a work break at, or at something. A, at like, a doctor's appointment, like, yeah. Talk about filling the time. If you want to get the app version, you're going to find this is like probably you're going to be one of your top games filling your time. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just very, very simple mechanics, but very satisfying. And it, because you always have that ability to also chase your high score, whether it be on the app version, whether it be in your group, or with the physical version, whatever the case may be, there's always that element to come back, and you can always feel like you're trying to achieve something. You didn't technically see everything you could in the game. If you're constantly thinking, "Can I get a higher score than last time?" so you'll be right. drawn back to it. Um, it, it can take. With, if you're playing this with four players, I would say, even though it says it's 30 minutes, I would say it kind of pushes that a little bit closer to 40, depending on how familiar everyone is with the game and how much time you're spending. Maybe at four players um, with some new people, it's maybe not quite short enough for some people to be uh, considered a filler game. But I think in general, it fits into that category. And I really could have picked any of the three versions of, of Clever to put on here. I just put this as, the, this is the first one. It's probably the easiest to learn, so that's why I put that one on here. But um, I know Carla really is a fan of the second one. Yeah, um, I do like the so. second one a little more, but I think this one is a better filler because I think the decisions are a little simpler as yeah, well. I think there's more to puzzle out in the second one. I haven't played the third one yet, but. Yeah, yeah. it's one of my favorite roll and rights, if not my favorite roll, roll and right. We'll have to do a yeah. video on roll and rights one day so we can yeah, definitely decide which ones are definitely, our favorite. Yeah, we have enough that we've played. So. Yeah, but that is the, that's pretty clever. <laughs> <laughs> Your number four pick, right? Yeah. Okay, on to my number three. Uh, same publisher as the last game, AEG once again. But this time we are going with Cat Lady, and this is by Josh Wood. Um, the main reason I would say that I have this one above Point Salad, because in some ways they are somewhat similar, right? It's a game where you have cards on the table and you're taking turns picking up cards, and then at the end you're kind of seeing what you scored for. So it has some similarities, but I think the theme, like, I don't want to say... It's not like a super thematic game, but point salad is just kind of like you're collecting veggies in the cards to tell you you get points or lose points, right? Yeah. Whereas Cat Lady is like you're actually like collecting cats and you have to get food to feed the cats. And if you don't feed them enough, they starve. And then there's toys that you can collect and, you know, you can get catnip and all these things, The right? spray bottle is pretty thematic. Yeah, too, exactly. Right? The spray, one. right, exactly. Yeah. And the expansion that comes with it, there's even like a laser pointer and all these yeah, little yeah. things. So, um, yeah, basically the long and short of it is you have a three by three grid of nine cards. And on your turn, you have to take one either row or column of three cards. Um, and then players just keep doing that until all the cards from the deck have been drafted and then at the end you go over your scoring conditions and yeah if your cats any cats that you couldn't fully feed uh, you lose points for them and kind of thing um, so it's very simple I've taught this to like even non gamers people who don't really like I taught this to an aunt and uncle who don't really play many games they really liked it a lot of people love the kind of really like cute uh, artwork and the fact that it is a very like fun and funny game right it's fairly lighthearted um, and the fact that I what does it say on the box about 30 minutes I think yeah, something like that. Either, either way, yeah, like either that's, way, that's kind of the the range it falls into. And, and I, sure. I was going to say the most interesting thing for Cat Lady to me, and I said this when we were talking about making our picks and trying to discuss what we were going to put on our lists, um, is Cat Lady is one that like it's a filler game, but. I think there's been times where people have specifically requested it as like a main course game as well. Like yes. it, it doesn't take up as much time as like no. a bigger game, but it, it's 
it's so satisfying that it's probably out of all the ones we're gonna select here, I would even argue it's probably the most satisfying and meaty in terms of all of them, where like, it doesn't feel like something that is necessarily as social and just about something you're doing in the background while you're talking as some of the other ones, because there's enough strategy and there's enough thinking, and there's enough yes. like, like comboing and everything that you're doing that you're like, you get really into it and yet it doesn't take a lot of time and it functions to the filler game. So for sure. it's the most satisfying out of all our picks for me and I, and I almost yeah. put it on my list for that reason. And you know what, of all the ones on mine for sure, I would say it probably has the longest rules explanation just because mm -hmm. you have to explain like certain cards you keep in your hand throughout the game, other ones go in front of you and there's certain things you have to compare at the end to see like who had the most costumes or whoever has the most unfed cats and there's so yeah i think you're right that's a good point there's a little more going on i think than some of these other ones yeah um but yeah if you're into the theme and you're looking for like a drafting game where you're just sort of like there's some set collection and that kind of thing i think this is a great one i've had this for a few years now i've probably played it at least 20 25 times and uh still hasn't gotten old so yeah that's my number three filler game cat lady love cat lady and there is an app too there's a mobile app in case you want to check it out uh before checking out the physical copy my number three is Code Names. Uh, Code Names is a game that I on to be completely honest, I haven't played in a while because we've been in a pandemic and I haven't met with as many people. But before the pandemic, it uh, was one of the earliest games I got in my collection, um, or like near the beginning, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really, really great filler game because you can play it in multiple ways, and I, and I find that like it's it, it, like so, like a lot of party games, even though there's these the set way uh, you know set rules in terms of like here's how the points score and here's how you make your teams. Yeah. People tend to like, just bend it how it works for them. Like yeah. oh this team's gonna have three people, this team's gonna have two people. We're gonna do the picks like this. Uh, this person doesn't enjoy being the person who guesses, so they're gonna do this. Like you yeah. can kind of bend the rules to to suit everyone so it, it can fit a multiple you know different types of groups, um, and it plays very very quick. And if you want you don't even have to do like the full like rules in terms of points you can just have some fun with the way it plays yeah i was gonna say when we're talking filler you can just yeah. say oh just play until whoever shows up and then we'll just be ready to start the game no one's yeah. really going to be like but we didn't get to final scoring it's yeah like, who, that's exactly. not what the game's about right that's that's what, and that well it's good because that's one of the reasons i was going to say it functions so well as a filler game is like you could be playing it because you're waiting for people to show up and when they show up you can just say jump right in like realistically yeah, if you don't true. care if you don't care too much about the points if you don't care too much about like oh now this team's more stacked like i don't think you're getting too competitive um, over code names in a, in a you know friend setting that you could have someone show up and be like yeah watch around then jump in and so yeah. as a filler game it functions where you can wait for someone to show up if they show up in the middle of the game they can jump in before you jump to the next one I think it works really well like that um, it plays really really quickly it's it's a ton of fun it's it's hilarious to see the ways that people I, I guess I didn't explain how it plays I assume that a lot of people know but basically you have these words on on the table and you're having to find ways to communicate to your team teammate or your rest of your team to guess those specific words you're trying to lead them to um, by connecting multiple words. So, you know, for instance, if you had, you know, these two words here that are connected by, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really bad, come up with an example right now. But if you, if it was like a, a, t a steak and chicken or something like that, you might say meat too. And that is, you know, two types of meat and there's two words that that associates with. So the way it gets really, really fun and really complex is if you can find a way to link like four words together because you're trying to beat the other team and or a clever way to be like, this word has a double meaning. Can I get them to catch on to that? So yes. it's very fun. And when people pull off these big turns and stuff like that, it's, it, the whole group gets all into it. So it's a party game, but at the same time, there's multiple versions of code names. There's a duet version. You can play with two players. It functions as a filler game. There's you know themes that'll be more attractive to kids. There's like Marvel code names, I think, and Disney code names and all this stuff like that now. So it's become really big. It plays. Uh, it says eight plus. Like I said, really, you could play this with if you wanna. If you had like a whole family gathering, you wanna play mm -hmm. ten people on each team. I'm sure you could pull it off if, if people yeah. don't mind having that many voices in the shuffle. But um, I think it functions really well as a filler game, and it's one of those party games that you know is just easily malleable to the situation, whether it be middle of the night begin the night end of the night so sure. that's why it's on my list nice pick very nice very nice yeah code names okay on to my number two pick which is Colorado. this is designed by michael i believe i'm pronouncing this correctly michael shocked and published by rio grande games uh i believe this game initially came out in like 2000 or 2003 or something it's an old classic very simple um, basically you have these cards that have different colored chameleons on them. All that really matters is the color of the card. Um, the way the game works is there's, uh, rows out on the table that people can pick from and on your turn you're taking a random card from a deck and you're putting it in one of the rows or instead of drawing a card from the deck and adding it to a row, you can just take a row of cards and the rows can either have one, two or three cards. 
and you're basically going around doing that until you empty most of the deck out and then you count the final points. But at the end, let's say I have like five different colors of cards, I'm only scoring positive points for the three colors that I have the most of. And then everything else, if I have, let's say, just like one yellow card and two orange cards and all the other cards I had more of, those are gonna be negative against my positive score. And there's little like wild cards along the way and little things, but it's it's a great filler game because again, it's one of those ones you can play quickly, the turns go quickly, the game only takes like maybe half an hour to play. That goes up to five players. Um, and there's a there's still a good amount of thinking because you when you're trying to decide which card to put out, you're trying to put it in a row where if you put it with where some, a card that someone else wants, you're trying to put another card that you know they don't want so that if they want that card that's going to score them maybe three, four points, they're going to have to take something that's going to be negative points as well. So there's yeah. the really clever little player interaction. There's a reason why this game has been around so long. Um, this is one of the ones that we discovered during the pandemic mm -hmm. along with, I guess I mentioned with Ink, Ink and Gold as well. This is another one that's on Board Game Arena, discovered in the last year or so. I've probably played it like 30, 40 times already. Everyone seems to love this who I introduced it to. Um, and yeah, just a great little Little filler game that can be played and look at the size of the box right sometimes a good filler game is something you can like throw in your backpack or maybe even your jacket pocket or something to take somewhere so yeah it's a great little one uh i don't think i'll ever get tired of this yeah i was i was super surprised by this when you showed it to me like i didn't know what to expect it's just a simple card game like that um we've played it a bunch of times now yeah. i i prefer it at the higher player counts i think that like as sure. a filler game it's probably good when you have like three or three people waiting for your fourth four people waiting for your fifth and then the fifth shows up and they want to actually play around a bit um it, uh, it's it's very simple but like carlos said it has these moments where you're like what am i going to do am i going to like try to screw this person over or am I going to try to like, you know, uh, uh, put them in a decision where they have to decide, am I going to take this or am I going to leave this yeah. part for this other person? There's, there's so many or decisions. Or you stack one of your own rows thinking I'll take that and then someone takes your row and you're like, what? I was setting yes. myself up and it's like, it might've even been bad for them to take it, but they know it yeah. hurts you more. So yeah, it's really fun. It's one of those games that makes you like, uh, you. I love those games and we've talked about this before where you have to agonize on your turn. You're like, yes. do I even have to take my turn? Can I just skip my turn yes, and I'll come yeah, back? Because yeah. every decision you make is so grueling and you don't even after you make your decision, okay, I'm going to take this row, you almost don't want to see what the next card is that's going to flip over to be like, oh, why did I take that row? That would have been perfect. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. the case may be. Those kind of moments are great. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I totally agree with the pick. I would have been surprised that this would have been your number one. I no, saw it sitting over there. I was like, I, I don't know which one's one and which one's okay, two. Okay, yeah, but yeah. Either one would have made sense for me. No, so. it's, it's a very good one. And yeah, don't, don't dismiss it just because like, you know, it just looks like there's not much of a game there i thought for years it was like coloretto it's just colored cards with chameleons i didn't really give it much of a chance and then as soon as i tried it on board game arena i realized how wrong i was so yeah that's my number two filler game coloretto all right pick it up my number two is sushi go party you know, Ooh, nice. there is a sushi go version that is a lot smaller than this that uh is can basically slot in this spot on this list as well. I picked the party version because of the flexibility and the, di the different changes you can make. But Sushi Go Party, Sushi Go is basically a card drafting game. Um, very simple as a card drafting game. You're basically just trying to match different types of sushi. Every every sushi scores differently. So you're gonna have a hand of cards, you're gonna pick a card, you're gonna pass your hand to the next person. Everyone's gonna do that around the table. You're gonna pick a new card until everyone's basically played cards in front of them. You might be trying to collect, you know, multiples of cards that ha have certain icons on them. You might be collecting, uh, you know, not trying to have the fewest of a certain type of card. You might be trying to play wasabi uh, first so that you can play a card on top of it and multiply your points. That's my dog making noise over here. He's getting a little restless. Um, and so basically it's just a very simplistic game and it's one that like I've, often turned to as a filler game even like in times when I visited my like gone to my mom's house or something like that and like we're done dinner and we aren't ready to go home yet like it's an easy game that I don't have to worry about you know the amount of teaching time that goes into it because it's very very simple you, all you have to do is say pick a card and let me just explain what the sushi do um and you can accommodate up to eight players what I think it is yeah eight players yeah. I, I don't know if the original version also it's the original no the original is two to five only. two to five yeah, yeah. so sushi go party you do get the flexibility of eight players so again if you have a bigger group and you're waiting for another person to show up or you have a smaller group and then the rest of your group shows up and they want to jump in you can do that yeah. um it plays over three rounds but that being said with I, I like the flexibility as a filler game that you could say hey Realistically, we know that these people are going to show up soon. Let's just play one round of it, yeah, and and if, yeah, right. if they're, oh, they're not here. We'll play a second round. You don't necessarily have to commit to the three rounds. It has that flexibility yeah. behind it. Um, the party version gives you a ton more sushi variants, so it's something where if you're playing it very often as a filler game and you don't want to get tired of it, you can say, hey, we've been playing this a lot now. Let's substitute the maki yeah. rolls for these or whatever the case may be, and just have a little bit of change and uh, game, different gameplay in your in your experience. So. 
Uh, we played this a lot. Uh, you'll notice on on this list, we should say there's probably a lot that are on Board Game Arena. It's because over the last little bit, a lot of our filler time has been yeah. Board Game Arena with the pandemic. But that being said, we have the physical versions for a reason. That's because we yeah. would play them in in person. We would play them online. Both are very great experiences. Yeah. This is on Board Game Arena. We've used it as a filler game there. I know I have, and I often use it as a filler game in person as well. So very very good game, and I highly recommend getting it because that's one of I, I was very close to including this as number one because I think it's a like a, a definitive filler game, but the number one on my list is just a little bit better. Yeah, fair enough. Nice pick. And uh, before you pull out your number one, I think we should do our number ones at the same time because I just realized our number ones are the oh, exact yeah. same. Okay, it's the I... only crossover on our list. Okay. So let's, uh, let's pull out what is probably the smallest game on our list, which is For Sale. For Sale. We both yeah. have the travel size version, just so you know the yes. regular version is a little bit bigger. <laughs> but, but I'll let uh, you go first on it. Okay. Um, yeah, this is another one we discovered during the pandemic. I tried it on Board Game Arena with just random strangers at first, and then I liked it so much. I probably played it like... 30 or 40 times before I even got to show anyone else, but I think I've got like 100 games that's logged on Board Game Arena now, yeah. but it's so, so good. It's simple auction game, um, but it's played over two phases. The first phase of the game, everyone starts with a certain number of coins, and you're basically, uh, there's a certain number of properties that come out on the table that have a value from either 1 to 30, and you're basically bidding and bidding, and people will pass, and if you pass, you take the lowest property left until all the properties have gone, and you play out a few rounds like that till all the properties are dispersed, and then the back half of the game is everyone has their properties in their hand secretly you don't show anyone and then you put these checks out on the table that are worth a certain value and then basically everyone plays their properties you flip them over and the highest property gets the highest value check and so on and then at the end it's just the player with the most money wins so you can play this honestly like especially board game arena where there's no setup or anything and everything's automated you can play it in like 10 or 15 minutes like how many mm -hmm. times it's the most common filler game we play where it's like, we're waiting online for someone, let's play for sale. Yep. And it's also the most of any filler game I've played, it's the one that most often people, after we're done, say, let's just play it again. Let's play yeah. another round for sale because it's, it's hard so to quick resist and, playing another one because it's yeah. so quick and, and you always, you've always you often want to like have another chance to win after you've learned the rules more or you came so yeah. close to winning or whatever the case may be. And a lot of hilarity happens between players. Anything with an auction um, with the right yeah. group of people tends to bring out the best in people. Sure. Uh, or the worst. People getting people. outbid. And yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> so... There's been just tons of really great moments where people are like, why are you bidding that that amount? Or, oh my God, you didn't just do that. But then like, nobody wants to back down yeah, exactly. and now someone else bids you. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, and I'll admit, the theme isn't something that jumped out to me. It took me so long to play for sale because I was like, it's just not an attractive yeah. theme to me. I wasn't really drawn to what it was. And it wasn't until I played it where I'm like, honestly, the theme does not matter here. I, I think there actually is... It was it this game that I think there's now a completely different version of coming out? Or yes, out? yeah, they did. Um, and it's a different theme I don't remember too, what right? it's called. No, I think it's still called for sale. I think is, it just says updated artwork. But is it houses or is it something else? I think there's houses, but there's an expansion that came with it. Oh, or maybe there's an optional variant of. or something. Either way, you, can play, you could but... almost be selling anything in this game if, if yeah, that yeah. real estate theme isn't for you. It's, yeah. uh, it's just the gameplay itself that is just, yeah, so, so great. Yeah, and this is an old game. Like, this has been around since, I think, either the late 90s or maybe mm -hmm. early 2000s. So, like, this is an old classic for a reason. Um, yeah, designed by Stefan Dora, published by Eagle Griffin Games. Yeah. There's a reason why it's number one on both of our lists. Yeah. You definitely I'm, give it a shot. I didn't expect it to be number one on yeah, theirs. But... As a filler game, like, again, it's, yeah, not, yeah. it's not... I don't even know necessarily if it's my... If we weren't talking just filler, this rank would, or this rank right, would be might different. Not be the same, but as yeah. a filler game, it's just hard to top it as a, as a filler experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah, honestly. And it goes up to six players, so the player count's awesome, too. It's just such a good game. Tons, tons of replay value. Sorry, my dog is just, like incessantly scratching over here and wants attention so we had to he just insisted on being in the in the outro video so i'm gonna let carlo close it off though but that's why that's why it doesn't spot up that is it for our filler games uh i guess it was supposed to be a top 10 i guess it ended up being a top nine since we did have this overlap but uh yeah let us know what you think um is your definition of a filler game the same or a little bit different uh, what other filler games are out there i mean i know we know a bunch of filler games we There's probably tons. have some on our shelves yeah. that we still haven't played. i thought about putting like splendor on this list as a great option for a filler game i think yeah. there, there's there's tons we considered here I, I had cat lady almost on my list you had almost sprawlopolis yes yeah, sprawl, yeah exactly i recently got high society which i've been really wanting to try we love reiner knizia that might make our list in the future kind of thing so there's tons of these out there let us know what your top filler games are otherwise as always thank you so much for watching um consider please subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet better yet tell a friend about us otherwise that's it for us thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time